on, Eddie. We only got a few minutes to get a hamburger down the corner. Then I gotta go over to the uh, barber shop and get myself a massage. My hair's getting kind of thin. It is? Yeah, but who wants fat hair? Oh. <laughs> Sweet with you, the funniest kind of block. Yeah, the funniest looking one, that's for sure. Bye, hon. Look, I'm gonna take a cab around here. I might stop by and see you tonight at the club, okay? Okay, Myrna. Goodbye, Tommy. There goes a real sweet kid. Yeah. They say arsenic tastes sweet at first, too. Oh, knock it off, Tommy. I'm seriously considering Myrna's proposal of marriage. Well, you could do worse than marry your agent. Keep the bookings in the family, eh? And you save the 10%. <laughs> uh, yeah. Tommy, you got a cigarette? Huh? Cigarette? No, all out. Hey, let's go to the corner drugstore and get some. Hey, speaking of cigarettes, ever tell you about my cigarette bit? You see me go up in front of the television. See? And then I go up and I say, and then the reason these cigarettes are so easy on the draw, my friends, is because they're pre-smoked. They're not just toasted. They're already smoked. All you have to do is flick off the ashes. And these cigarettes, folks, really help you cut down in your smoking. Because when you smoke them, brother, do you get sick. <laughs> and you don't stay just a quarter of an inch away from these. You can't get within 10 feet of them. So, remember, my friends, for better health and nice smiling teeth and downright enjoyment, give up smoking, see? Then I go into my... Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Oh, oh. Hey, meet the artist, you change? Hey. What's this? Nudist life. End of the month. Say, I wonder if the American Kennel Association puts this up. Arf, arf. Hey, these aren't bad dogs at that. Uh oh, a damsel in distress. Ma'am, if I accidentally shocked your modesty, if I had gone too far in expressing my own shock at seeing this printed army hygiene lecture, I apologize, like all over the place. That won't be necessary. Honey, if you were in a magazine, I'd buy every copy. Hey, wait a minute. I like. What a jerk. He won't even stay a neat quarter inch away. Both again. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, don't applaud. Don't applaud, folks. Don't applaud. It's all right. It's all right. Don't applaud. You know, just keep America green. Throw money, you know. <laughs> Oh, I can't quit now. Looks like Joy Maxim's bringing some new suckers in down here to 50 cent seats. <laughs> Suppose you folks want to know who I am. Say, honey, you want to know who I am? I had a little chick last night who wanted to know who I am. You know what she said to me? She says, say, who the heck do you think you are? <laughs> so, you know, so I kicked her out of the car. We both ran out of gas anyway, you know. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you. Now for a spot announcement. Oh, oh. Thank you, Spot. <laughs> How about that one? Say, anyway, as the comedians say, a funny thing happened to me on the way down to the club tonight. Picked up a magazine at the corner drugstore. Now, this magazine, you know, was way up in the top shelf, out of the reach of the little kids. It's a good thing, too. They see this, and it'll stunt their growth. <laughs> well, you know, the name of this magazine was, uh, what was it? It was uh, Nature's Life or Nudist Life. That's what it was, Nudist Life. And uh, all the nudes that fit the print, you know. <laughs> well, you know that old postal slogan about through rain, through shine, through uh, all that jazz, you know. Well, this one, it'll really stop. Because by the time they got there, all the pages would be scorched. <laughs> you know, I looked at this magazine and I scrutinized it. I mean to tell you, I really scrutinized it there. <laughs> oh, and by the way, folks, I was with another good friend of ours, Eddie Livingston, you know, and he saw the magazine too. So tonight he's going to sing a special song for you. You know, that old grand old favorite. When you wore a tulip, a big yellow tulip, and I wore a big red rose, and that's all. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh oh, don't go away, lady. I'm just getting to the best part. I say, haven't I seen you someplace before? Your back looks familiar. <laughs> huh? uh, okay, coach says I gotta leave the field, and so you know he saved me for the really big game, and uh, you know I'm gonna be a pretty hard act to follow tonight after this act. So exit music maestro. Get out of here, you nut. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Some comic. He wouldn't last around with Joe Miller. His jokes will wear you down. Either you laugh or leave. Reminds me of the time I win the light heavyweight championship. I wore the other guy out. He got so tired it hit me he fell over. But that's enough comics for now. In this corner, weighing at 165 pounds, wearing the purple trunks, which you can't see because he's got his pants on. <laughs> a real champion, Eddie Livingston, the world's greatest singer of song. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joey. Feels so bright and breezy Cause I'm standing close to her Everything is cool and easy Cause I mean the most to her Let everybody say it Bring on the band and play it Great things happen when I'm close to her It's no wonder I feel like yelling Cupid put an arrow in me And there's just no use for telling Where Cupid's next arrow will be My life is bright and sunny When I am with my honey Great things happen when I'm close to her I feel like yelling, Cupid put an arrow in me. And there's just no use for telling where Cupid's next arrow will be. My life is bright and sunny when I am with my honey. Great things happen when I'm close to her. Great things happen. When I'm close to her My life is bright and sunny When I am with my honey Great things happen When I'm close to her Great things happen When I'm close to her Joey, I was just telling Allison. A real golden boy. Has he got a future? A real comer if I ever saw one. That's right. I was just telling Allison here that both of your new acts have class. They're fresh and newsworthy. And Allison here, just the gal that can put them over for you. Oh, I'd like to put them over. Over Niagara Falls with outer barrels. They are great, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Half a dream Am I awake or is she Half a dream Where is the beacon Of love That lights me Or is what excites me Half a dream Who are those Angels talking, and am I just sleepwalking, am I holding Mr. You? Maxim, being new on your account, oh, I'd like to put together a file of your performer's background, as well as on the club itself. Now, do you have some photographs or other available data that I might use? No, but the boys will give you everything you need. I'll bring them over and let you meet them. Would pursue me Dare I awake Will I still find My wonderful one Will come to me Not time or space 
Was it enchantment when I saw her face? Can the stream carry me to her embrace? My love is real, but is she? And is my reverie so very real to me? Thanks, folks. There'll be another show in about an hour with Tommy and myself. Now here's Alex Forbes and his boys for your dancing pleasure. One, two, one, two, three, four. Matt Eden, Allison Edwards. Oh, hi. Bob Eden and Edwards. They handle the club's publicity. Miss Edwards here is the one that will get your name in all the columns. So give her all the information she needs on you and Tommy and cooperate with her. Will you, Eddie? Well, I hope Miss Edwards cooperates with me. How are you going to get my name in the papers? Oh, I know one easy way. I'll have you run over by a 10-ton truck. Oh, well, I take it you two have met before. Oh, yes. I turned over a rock and there he was. Hey, that wasn't fair. You're right. That wasn't fair. I apologize. Guess who? I'll give you three guesses. Little Orphan Annie. No, but you're close. Daddy Warbucks? No, try again. Sandy, I give up. <laughs> Mrs. Edwards, I'd like you to meet my agent, Miss McKay. On the street, Miss McKay. Do? How do you do? Nice Won't meet you me. have my chair? Thank you. Mr. Eaton and Miss Edwards are handling the club's press. I've heard about people like you. Yes, they write about people like us in Ripley's column. I was just about to delve into your client's background in show business for publicity reasons. Now maybe you could be of some help. Sweetie, I could give you enough on this character to send him to jail. But I'd rather you wouldn't this time, please. Myrna, let me give Allison the information she wants, then I'll do my last number and I'll see you later. Okay? I would dream of intruding. Well, I have to be running along. I'll see you at the office in the morning, Allison. It's been my pleasure, Eddie. Miss McKay? Oh, Mr. Eaton, if you're driving through town, would you give me a lift, please? I can see I'm of no use around here. Certainly, anywhere you say. Good night, you, you two. I'll probably call you at the office in the morning, Myrna. Don't bother. I won't be in. Okay. I'll save the dime. Miss Edwards, Allison, try to forgive us for what happened in the drugstore. I try to keep Tommy under control, but his sense of humor just gets the better of him sometimes. Oh, I'll get over it, if you will. You know, Something's been troubling me. Why did you grab that magazine from Tommy? Oh. Well, maybe I felt that children shouldn't be reading that magazine. Oh, Tommy's no child. Well, he certainly has a mind like one. Wait a minute. Tommy's not a bad guy. Neither am I, for that matter. You're quite a ladies' man, aren't you? Who, me? Oh, you mean Myrna. She's my agent. Well, from what I can see, she owns more than 10% of you. Even so. That leaves 90% open. Interested? And legally, all I'd need for control would be 51%. Say, that's the first time you ever smiled at me, and I like it. Can I have an encore if I buy you a hamburger? I know a great drive-in. It's right on your way home. Now, how do you know where I live? That's what I'm trying to find out. <laughs> okay, Eddie, you're on. I'll meet you outside after the last show.
What would you like, Alice? Oh, a hamburger, french fries, and root beer. Make that too, will you? Allison Edwards. That's a nice sounding name. Nice girl, too, and a pretty one. Aren't we being complimentary? I really like you a lot, Allison. I've liked you from the first moment I laid eyes on you. Slow down, Don Juan. I kind of like you, too. Thank you. You know, it's, it's strange. I've never felt this way before. All queasy and feverish inside. Hmm. Now, do you think you might be coming down with something? Who? Me? Oh, no. No, I think it's like, like love at first sight. Oh, but speaking of love, don't you just love hamburgers? <laughs> but Allison, I just don't know how to get through to you the way that I feel. I know. You feel as though you'd like some french fries or a root beer. Fighting the night. It is a beautiful night for swimming. Yeah, I wish I had my suit with me. Well, we don't need our... I mean, yes, that's too bad. What did you start to say? Oh, nothing. Um, I'm willing if you are. All right, Eddie. But you'll have to wait in the car until I take my clothes off. get this picture over with. Okay. Allison will be here in just a minute. 
Now straighten up, take a hold of the microphone, act like you're singing now. Look pleasant. There. That's it. Hi, gang. Sorry I'm late. Ta -da! Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. Oh, never have I seen a girl for Lorner. She gives me dirty looks for looking at dirty books at the drugstore on the corner. And what are you doing out, Luz? They cleaning your cage? I got kitschy bites. Hey, why the sour look? Your friend there, he just swung down out of the trees. He doesn't need a press agent. He needs an anthropologist. Well, I'll tell him to stop it. Come on, Bluebeard. Get up on the stage and let me get a shot. So you know, Cynthia, I think you and I ought to play house. I'll be the man on the street. You can be the girl up the street. Be quiet, you idiot. Let me take this picture. You know something, Cynthia? I think you're pretty enough to be on the cover of a magazine. Oh? What magazine? The American Cattle Breeder. Be quiet, you nut. Let me get this epic. Immortalize me. I think I'll immobilize you. Hey, Eddie. Eddie, did I tell you what happened to Cynthia the other day? She was taking a shower, see? And the doorbell rings. Ding, ling, ling, ling. And she says, who is it? Some guy at the door says, it's a blind salesman, lady. And so she figures, you know, like, what the heck, you know? And she goes to the door without a rope. And she opens up the door. And the guy looks in and he says, wow, what do I do with the blinds, lady? Take that, you character assassinator. Boy, you girls sure are sensitive about nudism, and that's the naked truth. Hey, did you get it? The naked truth. You will now hear my new song I just wrote called The Naked Truth. There's a place down the street. You might have been there. Women complain they've nothing to wear, and that's the naked truth. Boys, that's the naked truth. They skip and they jump, they run and they dance. They don't wear no clothes, but their breath comes in pants. That's the naked truth. Boys, that's the naked truth. You'll see lots of sights you never have seen. They come in all shapes, slight, fat, short, and lean. Oh, that's the naked truth. Boys, that's the naked truth. Boy, some audience have got around here. I think you girls were nudists. Allison, how about this weekend? After tonight, I'm free until Monday. Eddie, I'm sorry. I can't see you. What, again? Oh, don't worry. I'm not seeing another man. Well, I'm sure getting irritated this way. You know that I love you, Allison. But you never let me see anything of you. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. Eddie, you've taken me out after the show every night this past two weeks. But honey, I want to spend a whole day with you. The last two weeks, it's been the same old story. I even tried following you, but... When? Last Saturday. But I lost you on the outskirts of town. I don't like the idea of you following me. I'm sorry. If you'll just be patient, everything will be fine. You know, Tommy went with me. He's been getting the same kind of runaround from Cynthia. Never try that again, Eddie. And besides, I don't see where you're so neglected. You have other connections. What's that supposed to mean? Oh, I know all about you and your agent, Myrna. They tell me you practically live at her place. Oh, come on. You know better than that. Since I met you, I haven't seen Myrna at all. Maybe that explains why I'm about as popular with Myrna as a boil on the neck. Who cares what she thinks? Look, Allison, it's you I care about, not Myrna. Remember the Uncle Sam posters? I want you. Eddie, I'm very fond of you. But there are just some things about me that you don't know. I know this, that you're the most adorable, most irresistible, most beautiful woman I've ever known. What is this thing that, about you that I don't know? This isn't the time to tell you. And it's time for Cynthia and me to leave for the weekend. 
Come on, help me get Cynthia's stuff to the car. What the? Where are they going this time? Oh, the mysterious ones are going off on their weekend again. Every time I get started, they take off for a weekend. It's open sesame. Well, have a nice weekend anyway. Oh, I nearly forgot. You and the Mad Marvel in there have a radio interview on Monday at 10 a.m. Now, here's the address. Don't be late, Eddie. Bye-bye. <laughs>
that are real kooky. Today, our very special and glamorous guests are Allison Edwards, that gorgeous publicity gal around town, and two of the featured acts at our Roaring Twenties nightaree, Eddie Livingston here and Tommy Sweetwood. Let's have a great day welcome for them here. Our first guest in a moment, but now, let's hear the whiz-bang jingle. What's the matter with you, Eddie? What's happened? Why don't happened? you ask Tommy? Back on the air now, folks. Allison Edwards, won't you step up here, please? I understand you do the publicity for the Roaring Twenties. Now, wouldn't you tell us a little about the show going on there now? I'll be glad to, Sonny. First, I'd like to say that we've never had a more hilariously funny man than Tommy Sweetwood here. And girls, you'll swoon and go limp as I did when you hear Eddie Livingston do your favorite love song, Wow. Well, well. Eddie Livingston, step right up here, Eddie. I want some of our girls to get to know you better. Some of them I know too well already. Well, I know what you mean, but let's get down to some of the real facts of your life. What well, about the facts of life, huh? About yes. the birds and the bees? Well, I... How about the greatest thrill of my life? You yes, hear about that's that? what we want to hear. It was that night a few weeks ago when I first took that girl over there in my arms. It was a moonlit light and we went swimming without our... Eddie, please, stop it, please. Well, yes, please. Who asked you to butt in? You want a punch in the mouth? You want to know the real facts of life, huh? Well, I'll tell them to you. How my best friend over there had to tell me about the nakedness of the girl I intended to marry. How she consorts with all kinds of people. All kinds of people without any clothes on. Eddie, stop it! Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we'll come back for round two in just a few moments. Uh, say, kiddo, uh, did I ever tell you about my chicken I have that talks and lays square eggs? What's that? What's that? I said I got a chicken that talks and lays square eggs. Oh, well, ladies and gentlemen, this fine fellow here has a chicken that lays square eggs and talks. What does it say? Ouch. Oh. Well, listen, I ever tell you one about the two ball-headed men of the nudist camp? See, when they put them together, they look like oh, they were... that'll be all, ladies and gentlemen, for today and this week from... Uh, a uh, great day in the morning, brought to you by Whiz Bang, the cookies that are real cookie, uh, and now, uh, now, an organ interlude or something. What I do now? Duplicate you, I think that I'll survive. We 
We made the same scenes together You had your kicks, I had mine But as I reflect, I strongly suspect You were just stringing a line First I was the perplexed one You made me the poor vexed one You're gone, long live the next one I think that I'll survive Why deny it? Peace and quiet Like to try it, I think that I'll survive I don't hate you Ego inflate you Duplicate you, I think that I'll survive We made the same scenes together You had your kicks, I had mine But as I reflect, strongly suspect You were just stringing a line First I was the perplexed one You made me the poor vexed one Now you're gone, long live the next one I think that I'll survive think that I'll survive. I think that I'll survive. So glum, chum. Myrna, I don't want to talk about it. You're not still brooding over that nature girl tramp, are you? I said I don't want to talk about it. Eddie, dear, I'm only thinking about you. You're too much of a talent to be dragged through the mud by some idiotic girl who goes around with her bare face sticking out. Look, Myrna, for the last time, drop it. Darling, you're not still intrigued by this amateur strip teaser, are you? Okay, Myrna. Get lost! Get lost? What's the matter with you? I said get lost, blow, scram, vamoose. E-X-I-T spells out. But, Eddie, what about all our plans? Plans? What plans? Any plans we make, we make separately. You're my agent, that's it. If you don't like it, I'll get another agent. I can see that a girl has to take her clothes off to get your attention. I'm sorry, Myrna. You're a good agent. Let's leave it that way. Yeah. A great agent. I can get a booking for anyone but myself. childhood. I think it's a wonderful, healthy way of life, mentally as well as physically. And I'm not going to sit here and listen to a bunch of insults about something that I believe in. So why don't you just go back to Myrna where you belong? Well, maybe I'll do just that. Hold it, hold it, hold it, chum. Hold it, hold it now. You're not going anyplace. Get out of my way, Tommy. Look out now. You can't hit a man with glasses. Oh, now look, kid. I know all this is my fault. I'm sorry. So make me in charge, huh? You're both coming with me. Where to? To the corner drugstore. Just keep your shirt on. The rest of your clothes, too. Now, 
Now, shake hands and come out fight. There, that's better. Now, listen, the reason we're here today is because I talked to Cynthia, and she said that you were going to invite us out to the camp if this hadn't happened. Why? Okay, I'll tell you why. Once a year, we had Invitation Day, where the members can bring their friends to see just what we do at a nature camp. We have bowling and water skiing, a big yacht, even horseback riding. I was going to invite you, Eddie, for I felt that you should know what, what I do on those weekends that you wonder about. And I sort of hoped you'd understand. I understand, all right. Tommy, what is the point of all this talking? You'll stop, Siaka. Now, Eddie, in my opinion, we ought to go to the camp. Look at all the exposure we'll get. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eddie, remember all the times you said, Allison, when can I see more of you? Well, come to the camp next Saturday, and then you can see all of me. Hey, that's a good line. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, notice that you're the only ones around here uh, dressed like this. Well, <laughs> when in Rome, you know, <laughs> come on.
water skiing, Eddie. Where do we go? Right over there. Oh, okay. <laughs> Folks are going horseback riding. Would you care to join us? Gee, that sounds like fun. Let's go, Eddie. Yeah, Come on. I like that. Sure. Thank you. 
too. I'll show you.
time for the talent show. Eddie, we have a piano. Would you give us a little hand with the talent? Yeah, well, anything for a good cause. Good boy. Come on. Okay, everybody. Come on, everyone. Gather around here. Everybody gather around. enjoy some jovial fun and laughter at good old Sunshine Park. We've put together the greatest extravaganza ever to be seen in a camp like ours. Expensive acts, expensive props, scenery, music, and now one cent spent for costumes. <laughs> Our first performer is a comedian. He'd be a baggy pants comedian if he were wearing pants. <laughs> I bring you the greatest mirth on earth and boy, has he got it in for the nudists. Tommy Sweetwood, let's hear it for you. Oh, hello there. Oh boy, do I take this jungle bit. Hey, there's good, excuse me already yet. Ah, uh, there's good nudes tonight. Those are the funny, slap it up. You know, usually when I go to a party, I wear a costume, you know, like uh, New Year's Eve, I wear a full dress uniform. And you know, on Halloween, I wear a witch's costume. <laughs> This is a birthday party, isn't it? <laughs> now we'll play a little music. Music maestros, please. There's a place down the street. You might have been there. The women complain they got nothing to wear. And that's the naked truth. Boys, that's the naked truth. If your dress is the size of a postage stamp, it's still too big for a nature camp. Then that's the naked truth, boy, the naked truth. Now that's all there is, that's all to see. Cause now you folks have seen all of me. And that's the naked truth, boy, that's the naked truth. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much, you music lovers here in there. Thank you very much. And now I see, aha, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. <laughs> well, that's enough for talent tonight. I think you've seen enough of me. And uh, You know, we were going to have the opera company here tonight, the Metropolitan Opera Company, but they couldn't come. They forgot their costumes. <laughs> okay, and now that bareback singer of songs, Eddie Livingston. Yeah. Hey. Thank you, Tommy. No! 